In this video, we are going to learn about activation functions. We go over the definition of activation functions, why they are used. Then we have a look at different kinds of activation functions. And at the end, I also show you how to use them in your code. And don't worry because deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow make it extremely easy to apply them. This video is part of the Deep Learning Explained series by Assembly AI, which is a company that creates a state-of-the-art speech-to-text API. And if you want to use Assembly AI for free, then grab your API token using the link in the description below. And now let's get started. So what are activation functions and why do we need them? Activation functions apply a nonlinear transformation and decide whether a neuron should be activated or not. Now let's take a step back and see what this means. In a previous video, we learned how neural networks work. In a neural network, we have the input layer where we accept an input and an output layer that gives the actual prediction or the outcome of the network. And in between, we have the hidden layers. All of these layers consist of neurons and at each neuron, we apply a linear transformation. It multiplies the input with some weights and maybe adds a bias. Now, this is fine as long as we have a simple problem like this, where we can model the predictions with a linear function. But let's say we have a more complex problem. One thing we can do is of course add more layers to our network. But here's a big problem. Without activation functions, we only get linear transformations after each other. So our whole network is basically just a stacked linear regression model that is not able to learn complex patterns. And this is exactly why activation functions come into play. So after each layer, we want to apply an activation function. This applies a non-linear transformation and helps our network to solve complex tasks. Now let's have a look at different kinds of activation functions. There are many different activation functions you can choose. So we take a look at the most popular ones. We'll have a look at the step function, sigmoid, hyperbolic tangent, ReLU, leaky ReLU and the softmax. The step function will just output one if our input is greater than a threshold and zero otherwise. This perfectly demonstrates the underlying concept that the activation function decides if a neuron will be activated or not. If the input is greater than the threshold, the neuron is activated and otherwise not. While this transformation should be easy to understand, the step function is actually a little bit too simple and not used in practice. A very popular choice in practice is the sigmoid function. The formula is 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x. This outputs a probability between 0 and 1. If the input is a very negative number, then sigmoid outputs a number close to 0. And for a very positive number, sigmoid transforms it to a number close to 1. And for numbers close to 0, we have this rising curve between 0 and 1. This again means that the more positive the input number is, the more our neuron will be activated. The sigmoid function is sometimes used in hidden layers, but most of the time it is used in the last layer for binary classification problems. Until now, we have only seen activation functions that output numbers between 0 and 1, but this is not a requirement for activation functions. So in the next examples, you will see transformations that can output numbers also in a different range. The hyperbolic tangent is a common choice for hidden layers. It is basically a scaled and shifted sigmoid function that outputs a number between minus 1 and plus 1. ReLU is probably the most popular choice in hidden layers. The formula is rather simple. It just takes the maximum of zero and the input x. So if the input is negative, it outputs zero. And if the input is positive, it simply returns this output without modification. It does not look that fancy, but it can actually improve the learning of our neural network a lot. So the rule of thumb is that if you are not sure which activation function you should use in your hidden layers, then just use ReLU. There is only one problem that sometimes happens during training. This is the so-called dying ReLU problem. After many training iterations, our neuron can reach a dead state where it only outputs zero for any given input, which means there will be no more updates for your weights. So to avoid this problem, you can use a slightly adapted function, which is the leaky ReLU. The leaky ReLU is the same as the regular ReLU for positive numbers. Here it just returns the input. 
but for negative numbers it does not simply return 0 but it applies a small scaling factor a times x. a is usually very small for example 0.001 so the output is close to 0 but it avoids that the neuron will be completely dead. So this is also a very good choice for hidden layers so whenever you notice that your weights won't update during training then try using leaky ReLU instead of the normal ReLU. And the last function I want to show you is the softmax function. The softmax squashes the input numbers to output numbers between 0 and 1 so that you will get a probability value at the end. So the higher the raw input number the higher will be the probability value. This is usually used in the last layer in multi-class classification problems. After applying the softmax in the end you then decide for the class with the highest probability. Now that we've seen different actuation functions in theory let's have a look at how we can use them in TensorFlow and PyTorch. It is quite easy with both frameworks. In TensorFlow I recommend using the Keras API. With this we have two options. For each layer we can specify the optional argument activation and then just use the name of the activation function. Or we just leave this activation argument away and create the layer ourselves. All the functions I just showed you are available as a layer in tensorflow.keras.layers. In PyTorch we also find all activation functions as a layer under torch.nn. In our init function of the neural network we can create instances of the activation function layers and then in the forward pass we call these layers. Or as a second option we can use the functions directly in the forward pass by using the functions defined in torch.nn.functional. And that's basically all we have to do to use actuation functions in our code. All right, so I hope you now have a clear understanding of what actuation functions are and how you can use them. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And before you leave, don't forget to grab your free API token using the link in the description below. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.